Previously on AI the Somnium Files. You you haven't kissed anyone yet, have you? No, I'm not interested in that. Don't say, oh thank god. Oh thank god. <laughs> I love, when I, I love it when I call some shit out like that. Uh, I we <laughs> and now back to AI the horny guy. AI the horny guy. AI the horny guy. Boobies rule. AI the horny guy. Would you like to touch my man's nut? Boop, 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 boop. AI the horny guy. Hey, Dante, hey, hey, coming. Hey, I'm a horny guy. Hello! Stinko B! Back with some more AI the Somnium Files. When we last left off, we continued our investigation, but with our good old buddy Mizuki, who we then left all alone at a bar, we went out to go buy some cigarettes. But sorry, we'll come back later. Eventually. In a few years, maybe. <laughs> She's gonna be pee! <laughs> She's gonna be so mad later. Though I do see why he would leave her, because I mean, yeah, Mizuki definitely shouldn't come to it. Definitely shouldn't be coming to a place like this. Although I, I do also feel like the same could have been said for all the other locations that he ended up taking her to. It's like, I don't know if it's a good idea to bring the 12 year old to the scene of where her father was killed or this very promiscuous bar, but I guess he's fairly adult for her age, right? Sorry, honey, daddy's gotta go kick ass and I can't let you see how badass I'm being. <laughs> I can't have you seeing me as some kind of cool dad, right? By the way, I do just wanna say real quick, so uh, this game is a little bit buggy. I mean, aside from the thing that you guys saw, obviously, right, with the uh, the Somnium, where the graphics are freaking out, which we do seem to have fixed. One thing that's also been happening, that's been actually happening off screen is uh, when I load the game, uh, I've had at least four crashes randomly just happen when I loaded the when I load the game crash hard to desktop uh, I have no idea what's causing it and then it just ra it'll just randomly work like so this time when I when I logged in this time or loaded this time uh, I crashed twice before it finally worked and then the last time I did it I think it crashed once and then the time before that it crashed once too it just seems to randomly happen when I load the game I don't know what's up with that I tried looking it up I didn't see anybody else having that same issue so I don't know if that has to do with high frame rates again or some other shit, I have no idea. I'm glad it eventually works, but it keeps, me, it keeps making me nervous. Like, eventually, eventually it's gonna come back and I'm gonna try to load the game and it's never gonna load. Well, Nico, you know you solved that problem, right? You just gotta play the entire game in one sitting. Never exit out of it. So yeah, so guys, it's gonna be a really long episode. It's gonna be like an 18 hour episode. <laughs> We're gonna go right through to the end of the game, see every ending and get every achievement and get platinum. So, you know, buckle up, it's gonna be a long one. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully it doesn't happen too much more. I'm, I'm really hoping that's not like a serious issue I have to worry about down the line. And unfortunately I can't just do like, like let's say for example, I just, okay, maybe if I just turn every, all the settings down like super low or something, right? But the problem is that I'd have to, I'd then have to exit the game to change them back to normal. I can't do it from inside the, the game here. Like there's no options in the uh, uh, the menu here for uh, video changing. Uh, yeah, so it's all done on the uh, menu on the outside. So so we'll see, we'll uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, but anyway, last episode, uh, Empire said, so regarding the big titty receptionist character, while answering questions, Uchiko should explain why the receptionist was created. And uh, here's a direct quote. I generally like panties, but I came to notice that 70 to 80% of men like titties. That's how I decided that there had to be a titty character in the game. After saying titties over and over, I became a titty lover too. <laughs> Guitar Uchikoshi. As you can see, he has his priorities where they should be. <laughs> Oh my God. This man is a character. It, it reminds me so much of Yoko Taro, honestly. Like, are they friends? I feel like they probably would be good friends if they're not. Actually, I think it was, it was didn't Uchikoshi and Yoko Taro also talk about 13 Sentinels? Or was it Kadaka who mentioned 13 Sentinels? I don't know. I actually think it might have been. <laughs> I mean, they are friends. Maybe they're both, they're both playing. They're like, this game is great, dude. This game is great. Nobody's playing it. Why? We should tell them. Yeah, let's do it. I, I don't know. <laughs> What the fuck? The thing about panties is like, why panties? Like, is it the panties themselves or is it just like what the panties hide? Like, if it's the what the panties hide, okay, I kind of get it. But I've seen like people have been like actually get infatuated with the actual panties, the fabric itself. It's like, dude, come on, man. Though, when you really think about it, I mean, 
Why are we infatuated? Why are we infatuated with titties, right? Why are we infatuated with fucking anything? We're just built that way. We're fucking stupid. Our male monkey brains will attach themselves to something, right? And for some reason, that general thing tends to be ass, titties, ass, and titties, ass, ass, titties, titties, ass, and titties. It may not make any sense, but it's just how it tends to be, right? I guess the same. So, so the same could be said for panties too. Why not? Why are some people attracted to feet, right? I'm sure there's some amazing psychological reason behind all these things but for right now i think we're just gonna leave it at that but thank you Empire, for sharing such a weird yet so very uchikoshi comment from uchikoshi and it is for that reason you are comment of the day i like he just like the only reason he really added it in there was because he's like i like the word <laughs> big old titties well, hilariously it's actually not what Dante saying he's not saying that there's a receptionist with, with big titties over there he's saying large breasticles <laughs> I don't know maybe the local station team thought that'd be too offensive or something if he said that like look at the titties on that chick over there make Dante a little too raunchy we want him to be a certain high class uh horny guy right we don't he can't go too far a respectable horny person but anyway, we uh, uncovered that Renju likely has some kind of affiliation with uh, the Yakuza. So we came in here, uh, Date kicked everybody's ass, and now I'm going to look at all their shit, and they can't stop me. Look at this thing. Company motto. The company philosophy on the wall. If you actually enter a bar instead of a restaurant, don't feel obligated to order a drink. Even if the bartender gives you that order a damn drink look. That's quite the motto. What? That is the motto. Wait. Wait, did it change again? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, log. A company philosophy is like a summary of ideals and goals of that company. Okay. Uh, permit? Some kind of permit. Lots of them. Uh, whiteboard. Last month's schedule is written on the board. 21st, Ika Keen's beatboxing for beginners. I like how he just lets me, like, I came here, beat everybody up. He's like, what are you doing here? Well, let me tell you. And I just start, I just start turning my head and looking at all this shit. So, what are you doing? Shut up, I'm having my inner monologue. I'm saying my funny things in my brain. Uh, partition. Partition set up by the doorway, probably to obscure the view from visitors. Hey, it's pronounced partition and not partition. I know how it's pronounced. Now, see, I wonder what the... I almost wonder what the, that original joke in Japanese was, right? Because clearly that's something that only makes sense for English. Did he say something totally different? It was probably still some pun, right? Or some dumb wordplay. Seriously, Uchikoshi likes his wordplay a little too much. <laughs> Look at him. The skinny one, he's completely out. Hey, wake up. There would be no point in talking to him in that state. Stop breathing. It's fine. I'm going to take your knife. The knife one of them was carrying. The kind that knifes night, nicely at night. It just might. Is that a tiger? Oh, it's a ti tiger rug. Yeah, but look. A flying squirrel taking a nap. It is clearly a tiger. You see? A tiger. <laughs> what, I can't look at this table or this cigarette thing? What? Or the sofa? <laughs> I can't remark on every every inch of first of the ceiling tile that's fun the fat one he's holding his stomach in pain you doing okay buddy I got nothing to say to you uh it's a desk it probably belongs to someone in the gang there are tons of things on top of it actually to be perfectly frank i'm actually happy i'm actually glad that it i don't know maybe this starting to move past where i don't have to examine literally every like like sofa table cigarette bud this is like because most of the time it's just fucking nothing it's like you know honestly i'd be fine if they just include the ones that actually had, he actually has things funny to say about you know Door next to the room. I guess maybe the point is that they want you to sort of hunt for it, right? They want you to hunt for the funny dialogue. A bronze dragon. A bronze dragon. A bronze dragon holding a golden ball. But what it inevitably ends up leading to is you just, just like, I'm going to click literally everything. Golden ball, huh? Dragon holding a golden ball. It's kind of frightening seeing all these lanterns lined up. Scary lanterns. Scary lanterns. You don't have to repeat it. I feel like I'm missing the joke on that one. There are layers with the Kama Kumakura written on them. A Shinto shrine. The crest. Kumakura. The Kaiyan Gang crest. Oh, God. Oh, wait. Window. Shelves. Whoa. Oh, I clicked my menu by accident. Oh, oh that's interesting. I actually clicked my menu with my cursor and also examined the shelves. Apparently I can do that. Uh, okay, I think that might be it. Wait, 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 desk. Chairman's desk. Phone, I'm gonna, <laughs> I grab his phone. Hey, hey, Mizuki, Mizuki, come over here. You guys see me beat up these dudes. So a telephone the desk, ah, uh, computer. A guy like the chairman need this for? To look at porn. He probably just uses it for porn. <laughs> oh my God, oh God. Oh God, I'm scared guys. What the fuck? Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> 
starting to get scared now. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm starting to get scared because I'm, I'm starting to feel like Dante and I are, 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 are on the same wavelength. I'm starting to think we are, he and I are just like the same person. No, no, no. <laughs> I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe I'm just some random character Uchikoshi created. <laughs> Uchikoshi's like, Nico, you are my greatest creation. <laughs> Everything's been building up to this moment. No, no, the ultimate mind fuck. Nico B was an Uchikoshi character all along. <laughs> oh God, I am a, uh, I am frightened for my life and my sanity. Date, stop saying the same thing I'm thinking. Stop it. Not every man in the world is like you, Date. Not every man in the world is like you. Nico, what? I mean, Dante. Huh. <laughs> like it like types out the word Nico and then it backspaces the right stuff. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Did you guys see that? I know you guys saw that. I go back and check the recording. It's not there though. Nico, what are you talking about? No, no, I swear to God, it's there. He's fucking dead. Uh, okay, I think we got everything. All right, let's talk to our new friend here. Hi, MoMA. That's a dumb name. The man sitting in the chairman's seat is named MoMA. MoMama. Uh, about Shoko don't know nothing about her. I know her face and her name. It was on the news. Nothing else. Shoko was part of an investment fraud scheme, and I have it on good authority that a certain Yakuza gang was helping her. Wouldn't know nothing about that, cop. You know, it's interesting how I, th I feel like I've, I've heard a sort of mixture of um, pronunciations here, where like, I, sometimes I hear them actually pronounce it like, like they're saying Yakuza, right? Which is a very American way of saying it. And that's how I was saying it for the longest time too. But after playing enough of the actual Yakuza games, I've, they got me to sing it the, I think what's technically probably the right way. But I think I've seen some other names that they've said where they actually have said it like the, the actual like Japanese way, you know, the, where we don't hold the syllable or, or stress the, the, the middle syllable. It's like, it's the beginning syllable for the Japanese. Yeah, cause uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's interesting. It's just interesting how, hear how localization teams sometimes handle this. Cause I have seen other dubs in English dubs where they, they do all always make sure to, to make the pronunciations as close to the Japanese as possible, possible when it's Japanese words, right? Or names. Like I'm sure if, 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 if Yagami showed up here, they'd probably call him Yagami, right? Where's the chairman? What? Chairman is right in front of you. What? I run the Kumakura gang. I'm Moma Kumakura. This guy's got some stupid eyes. Like, <laughs> look at his eyes. Probably shrunk down and cross-eyed to look a little menacing, but they just look a little derpy that to me. That can't be right. The chairman of the Kumakuras is Rohan. Uh-oh. You aren't the chairman. Ooh, there's a new expression for Date here. His left eye is kind of closed and... Hmm. Yo, asshole. You need a lesson in manners? Do you need another lesson? <laughs> Date, wait. I did some research and discovered that Rohan Kumakura died last year. <laughs> Dude, his hands? For some reason, this guy's hands don't really match his face at all. <laughs> Unless, is he wearing gloves? He's like, my face is all old and wrinkly, but I have the hands of a fucking newborn baby. <laughs> He left to his death from the roof of a building. Ooh. Suicide. But MoMA did not take over last year. MoMA took over six years ago. Six years ago. Hmm. Interesting. I'm trying to think if, if how could this potentially tie into what my dumb theory was, right? Like, oh, what if, what if Date was this uh, previous Cyclops killer, right? Could it be something sort of like what Judgment was, where, uh, he was like an assassin for hire and maybe got hired by this by this group at some point maybe or or and maybe a more likely fashion uh whatever he was before maybe he was also tied to this gang in some way in terms of like what Renji was where he owed them a debt of some kind mm, i don't know but he clearly reacted to that right he reacted to to rohan's name How about renju i told you i got nothing to say Bitch, I got a fist with your name on it. it. Says that you do. You deaf or something? Date, a minute, please. I'm gonna go in his brain. What is it? Do you see the sofa in the reception area? There is an ashtray on top of the coffee table. What about it? Yeah, I was actually wondering. I, I saw that. I was like, I was kind of surprised that it didn't let me examine that. It is peculiar. Thermal imaging reveals that they are both warm. The sofa and ashtray. Was it not these guys? Oh, oh, what the hell now I can examine it. Oh my God. Well, that, wow. 
That was interesting. That was a that was a little Detective Nico right there deduction there. I was like, I assumed it was just the game. Like, okay, we're not gonna let you have you examine literally everything. Yeah, so you've examined enough sofas by this point. Let's we're moving on. But no, it actually was that it was for story reasons. How about that? Uh, thermal vision. The there are cigarette butts in the ashtray. So someone must have been sitting here. The question is, how long ago? Hmm. And not one of these two, I guess. Part of the cushion is still red. Just as I thought. I've been staying here for like 30 minutes. Damn. He must have had a hot ass. Coffee table. There's an ashtray on top of it. An ashtray. I see a few cigarette butts in it. I want to find out when that smoker finished it. Zoom in. Hmm. Just one. On well, cigarette buds, the tip is reddish. Hey, Iba, can you turn off the thermal vision? Sure. Klein. The cigarette brand is Klein. Why is that relevant? Small details will come in useful later. Trust me. Hmm. Go someplace to see where they maybe they went out to go buy some more cigarettes. Oh, I didn't check. I didn't examine this guy's chair. A chairman. <laughs> Chairman's chair. All right, there we go. Is there someone here recently? What are you talking about? You're the first guest today. Although you are an uninvited guest. Don't lie now. Someone was sitting on the sofa and smoking very recently. How do you know that? I just do. I've got a very high-tech eye ball. Oh, right. I remember now. Just a bit ago, one of our guys was on the sofa. Are you talking about these guys right here? Yeah. Not possible. When I came in, you made a big mistake coming here. Go home. Yeah. Who's this asshole? Neither of them was on the sofa, and neither of them was smoking. They left. Who left? Uh, an insurance salesman. Right before you came in. I don't think so. I didn't pass by anyone on my way here. And I happen to know this office only has one entrance and one exit. Hmm. So they're still in here. Which means, whoever it is, they're still in this office somewhere. Oh, are they under the table behind him? Let me check the back. Why you want to do that? I just wanted to say hello to our guest. I'm telling you, you're the only one here. Man, wouldn't these guys have a gun or something? <laughs> like, forget the chairman will pull out a gun at some point. I mean, I, yes, I know guns are illegal in Japan, but it's the fucking Yakuza, right? Oh, then you won't mind me checking. Just get out of here, cop. Well, actually, he was reaching for his gun at one point, wasn't he? That's right, he was. When, it, when I came in, he was reaching for his gun, but I stopped him. I showed him my badge, and then that's when he, that's when he was like, mm, because, yeah... Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I think it, all across the board, even probably with the Yakuza, Yakuza mobs in general, killing cops is a bad idea, right? It tends to be bad for business because it ends up bringing unwanted attention to to them. So they tend to probably leave cops alone, which makes sense because you kill a cop, you can bet your fucking ass that entire organization is going to go after you. There must be someone they don't want us to see somewhere behind that wall. Behind the, the wall? Over here? Oh, look! It's a man in a, uh, kimono or something. Just as I thought. Dickhead, I see you! This must be whoever was sitting on the sofa and smoking earlier. My evolver can shoot right through this wall. Evolver? Evolver? <laughs> I shoot him. Yeah, yeah, I should shoot him, yeah. Wait! Hmm. Is he not getting enough? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Now I'm starting to think I actually am onto something. The other ones felt like they could have been more like jokes, right? But now she said it. This is probably the third time she said this now. And now this time she didn't even say medication, right? She just said, hmm, is he not getting enough? Hmm. Ooh. ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm starting to think there might be some credibility, at least... To, it, if not like him, me being this other Cyclops killer, simply some credibility to him potentially before having been a violent person, right? 
with violent tendencies. I think she is clearly, I think maybe secretly giving Dante some kind of medication to keep his shit on the down low. What? Never mind. The person oh. behind the wall is unarmed. And he is, he's unaware of it. I cannot approve the use of a revolver in this situation. Damn it. Shoot him in the dick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wow, never mind. Apparently they don't give a shit. They're like, whatever it is, it's worth killing Dante for. <laughs> oh my God, in my brain. I'm entering the matrix. Here we go. What the hell? My Dante senses are tingling. Dante, a porno bag at your feet. What? <laughs> uh, oh my god. Uh. <laughs> what? That was the goofiest shit ever. Hey. Did you just shoot at me? Motherfucker! Porno man. What? I'm sorry, where were you hiding that? Well, wait a minute. <laughs> what the hell is happening? Uh, is he shooting at his boss? Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> okay, it's just getting a little, little crazy. Get ready for a button prompt. Here we go. Ah. Uh. Uh. Dante, load a revolver with explosive rounds. Aim for the dragon's gold ball on the right. The what? Oh, that. The balls. Why? Just do it. Do it. Uh. Focus, Dante. Oh, yeah. Here we go. First person shooter at a time. Oh, my God. This is giving me some serious outlaw star vibes. What do I do? Press the button? Just hold it there? There we go. Gotcha! What the hell? Okay, sure. All right. That was, uh... You saved me. The secret lives of... The secret lives of Yakuza wives? I just got achievement. That was, uh... That was definitely something. <laughs> that was, um... <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, Iba senses the danger coming, and she's like, the only way to get... The only way she knew to get Dante to bend down fast enough was... <gasps> Look, a porno man! Oh, my God! Me going to stop in the middle of what he's doing is like, investigation a halt. Port! Boobs! He shoots the ball. And yes, just knew the trajectory that he shot at was going to cause that to shatter in just the right way that it would hit both of them. It's fine. You know what? Special disbelief, anime, it, it's fine. Everything happened as I simulated. Yes, Iba is a literal god. So, where's this porno man? <laughs> Where is it? You idiot. There is no adult magazine. No! However, I know that your reaction time is up to 3.6 times faster when you are excited. <laughs> when you're horny. <laughs> I simply took advantage of that behavior. Dare to, dare to, dare. Yes, that's right. Every time, every time Dante gets turned on, he just like immediately enters bullet time mode. What the hell? <laughs> You're a grown man. Aren't you too old to be playing with toys? Where the fuck are you aiming, dude? I'm over here. Hey, coward. I see you. Show your face. So, so that, that gun is like a caster from uh, Outlaw Star. Sick. I know you. Hey. Yeah. This guy is actually the, the most Yakuza looking guy here. Everybody else here is a fucking bitch. Oh, he's probably the actual chairman, right? The new chairman. Yeah. Oh! Oh, God! Having... That's... Reactions. His son, maybe? Sejima. So, Congressman. What is this guy doing here? Hmm. 
Dadling gun. This shit is this shit got a little ridiculous. All right. Like, okay, I guess I guess kind of believe some of this stuff, but like the guy pulled out a Gatling gun and also it looked like he was aiming more towards this, the guy sitting in the chair. Uh, an old fashioned Gatling gun. He's like, ah, hey, how's it going? I'm gonna talk to you some more. Always give me a glare. About Rohan Kamakura. I heard that the former head of the Kumakuras committed suicide last year. Yeah, what's it to you? Nothing at all. I just Nothing at talk all. about it. Rohan was my older brother. Oh, okay. He was my big brother in this organization and my blood brother. Six years ago, he, uh, he got sick in the head. He got sent to a special hospital. And naturally, because I'm his brother and next in line, I was the successor. Oh, okay. So it really is you. Okay. Not this other guy. That's all I'm going to say. You want to know more? Hire a private eye. I am a private eye. I've got... Did you say I? About Shoko. Uh, well, I guess there's no point hiding it now. <laughs> we used our trump car with that Gatling gun over there. Seriously, where was that thing being kept? I had it in my pocket. Just pulled it right out. Earlier, when I said I didn't know her. I thought so. Well, duh. You and the Kumakuras were a part of the fraud scheme Shoko was organizing. Yep. Whenever any wise-ass investors gave her trouble, we handled it. Oh, ooh. Exactly as I suspected. Shoko was affiliated with the Kumakuras. Ooh, shit. Shoko's a bit of a... Bit of a frigid bitch, huh? <laughs> Damn. Zuki, you're, uh... Your parents were, uh... Kinda, kinda... Kinda sus. I've been looking after that guy since high school. It was the usual stuff. I had him help me with a lot of work. But now, it's kind of the opposite, you know? We're getting work from him. Hmm. Well, we were. Now that he's dead, though. He's fucking dead. What work did he have you do? Eh, the usual. If Talon at his office was causing trouble or something. You ever get into any disputes with Renju doing this work? No way. He paid good money. I've never even gotten into an argument with the guy. Hmm. Do you have an alibi for yesterday and the day before? Us Kumakuras are a branch of the Ujisaki family. The Ujisaki family runs a yearly golf tournament. Mandatory attendance. We were all at the tournament those days. We only got back this morning. You've been asked a hotel. They'll tell you. Date, I did some research. The hotel's record of guests does list the Kumakura members. They were also seen on several surveillance cameras. This could have been doubles. It is not possible that any of the Kumakuras could have killed Shoko. Yeah, that would have been too boring of an answer. <laughs> oh my god, can you believe it, guys? The people that killed Shoko and Renju were it was the mob? Oh. <laughs> it was just the mob. Including Moma. All right. Sorry, I know you were standing here dramatically waiting me for, for me to interrogate you, but I, I, I felt like talking more to your friend here. Anyway, how's it going? It's so, it's so Sejima, a member of Congress. I've seen him so often on TV, it feels like I've met him before. I see. So a congressman, an actual, like, Japanese congressman, part of the political system, not any kind of, well, seemingly not any part, part of the mob. What are you doing here? I've had a relationship with the Kumakura since back when Rohan was running things. I had business nearby, so I stopped here for a visit. Whatever conspiracy theory you're imagining in your head, you can forget it. This is strictly business. Strictly business? A congressman meeting with Yakuza? How are you gonna spin that? It's true. I imagine my public image will be dragged through the mud. But we haven't done anything illegal. If you want to accuse me of such wrongdoing, then by all means. I just happen to think such gossip is better suited for tabloids. Yeah, the whoever's voicing this guy is perfect. <laughs> it's per perfect voice. Um, about Shoko. The victim prior to Renju, I believe Moma introduced me to her. Introduced. We were just having drinks. Shoko stopped by to say hello. Right. We didn't talk about anything. 
They're trying to give me the run around. Indeed. I'm gonna shoot him. The president of Lemnusgate? We aren't friends, but I did meet him a few times through work. What work were you doing to meet up with the head of an entertainment company? It was just some party hosted by some company or other. It's not unusual. Events with those uptight stuffed shirts can be rather dull. So they have some young women from an entertainment office attend. I will say, I, I, I don't know if I've commented much, but the music in this game is actually quite good. This, this soundtrack here in the back. So the Japanese sounding flutes and then like this little bit of burr. It's like sort of suspenseful. I don't know. And the other songs I've noticed have been uh, good, very appropriate, and sets the mood. Anyway, we only saw each other a few times. I don't even remember what we spoke about. Do you have an alibi for yesterday and the day before? I went to work, then went home. So, you have no alibi? No, I always have my bodyguards near me. Where the fuck are they? If you want to, you can ask them. Oh, wait, are they the ones that beat up? Bodyguard testimony can be unreliable. Right. There is a possibility that they would lie to protect Mr. Sejima. Yep. I agree. I can't trust that. Date, I have determined that these individuals have nothing further to add. I'm confiscating that Gatling gun. <laughs> I just like, I, come on, I bet we're leaving. Awkwardly pick it up and walk out the door. Hey, Mizuki, look what I got. Even if they are involved, they will not volunteer any more information. We need solid evidence to move forward with the investigation. You're right. You're right. Date, a call from Lemniscate. From Lemniscate? Connected. Oh, God. Date, it's me. Date, oh, my God. You want to come out later? Not now, big titty receptionist. Um, you remember, like, how you said to call you if I was a game? Well, he's here now, so I guess I'm calling you. <laughs> I guess I'm calling you. Got it. I'm on my way. I got it. Where are you going? How are you doing? It's none of your concern. Moma, Congressman Sejima, I think I'm going to call it a day. I'll come back soon. We'll swap drinking stories. You serious? Hmm. Let's go, Iba. Roger. Huh. Interesting. So standing there looking rather irritated. And everybody else in the room is completely dead. <laughs> this guy's just frozen in this, in this pose. Okay. Bye, guys. Good talk. Bye, new friends. The big titties call. I come. I mean, I, I, I go there. That's, yeah. Phrasing. This is all really suspicious. What is? Congressman Sejima and the Kumakuras. There's definitely something going on there. I agree, but I am not sure it is linked to the new Cyclops serial killings. We need to do further investigation. Oh, hi. I'm going to talk to... You, the girl not really sitting there. By the way, I keep forgetting to check the gear shift here. Damn it. Nothing funny. There appears to be nothing funny in my car, except for this invisible girl here. A girl in the passenger seat. A girl in the passenger seat? <laughs> Nani? What? <laughs> Scream like a little girl. Warn carefully. Roar like a lion. Who are you? Scream like a little girl. Do it. <laughs> Impossible. How did a jellyfish get in here? <laughs> yes. So shiny, too. You utter idiot. It's me. Renju? Do I look like Renju? Mizuki? It's me. Boss? Date, seriously. Then, are you... Could you possibly be... Mom? <laughs> idiot. Skello's fucking around. Your dosage too much. My dosage? Anyway... You're Iba, right? Why are you here? Looking like okay. that. Okay, okay, there's, yes, there's definitely, okay, they're, they're laying that shit on thick now. Yeah, that's, that's definitely what's going on here. Now, it's like, pretty much clarify this point. Clearly, she is secretly getting some kind of medication to either forget things or to keep his violent tendencies down because clearly whoever he was before was a violent person, right? Wait, wait, how did she say it exactly? Must increase your dosage too much. So say, she's saying that it, too much dosage means that he forgot things, right? Because it seemed like he was forgetting who she was. So maybe that's it. Maybe the dosage is, is used to keep his, um, not just to keep his violence tendencies down, but to make him forget, right? I just thought I would project myself. You seem lonely. How are you doing this? I am overlaying the image your left eye processes with augmented reality. You can't see me through your right eye. 
Only your left. You can't just pop into my eyeball without permission. You do realize I do that all the time, right? That's my entire character! It seems like he does keep kind of forgetting about her, though. Like, right? Like, he doesn't remember... They did say that, like, every time that he does, like, a somnium, he, like, he ends up forgetting about her afterwards. About your appearance. Come to think of it, you look kind of like you do when you're insomnium. Oh! Oh, ne never mind. What's that about? What do you mean? Well, you don't usually look like that. You have a somnium form and another form. Oh, this? Yes, that. Why are you doing this now? I was bored last night, so... Huh? I thought you would like it. Why would I like it? Well, I did attempt to shape myself to your preference. You know, I actually almost wonder if the reason why she's not wearing shoes is because Dante Sierra has a foot fetish or some shit. I only, and I only say it because he literally was like looking through the shoe thing at uh, Aset's house, right? I'm looking at the shoe thing. He's like, I wonder if they smell like... <laughs> oh my God. Some deep, deep lore about uh, Iba's appearance there. Why in particular? So he likes, he likes smaller boobs. He likes being able to see the panties. He likes to be able to see leg and feet. If you could do that, change it. I will not. Why not? Why not? Because I won't. Uh, I'm going to have to get used to this look. I fear you would eventually grow tired of the other form as well. That almost like, actually, I think about it. The other one does actually look a little bit like a, like what Monokuma was. I just wanted to change my look a little. Think of it as a haircut. Pretty drastic haircut. So Mo, so and Moma are suspicious. As I said earlier, I completely agree that they are suspicious, but there is nothing currently linking them to the case. So the guy the right looks so derpy. That's true. We have no established motive. <laughs> Victims were displayed, tied up on a horse, hung from the ceiling, and their left eyes taken out. We still don't know why. Ow! It is possible that Shoko and Renju were disloyal to Congressman Sejima and the Kumakuras. They could have been killed and displayed as a warning. That would fit the current evidence. Huh, maybe. But it doesn't feel right. That doesn't sound very uchikosha y <laughs> That doesn't sound very mindfucking. That's just kind of a basic shit that might happen in the real world. But this is Uchikoshi land we're in. Don't you know, Iba? How is so related to the Kumakuros? I looked into that. Unfortunately, I did not find anything in our database that could connect the two. I didn't find anything on that Google search. Let's see. However, I did discover some rumors on the internet. Most of them come across as gossip or conspiracy theories. But would you like to hear them regardless? Please. Okay. Mr. Sejima currently resides in Azabu. He lives in a mansion, a restored samurai castle. Ooh. But 20 years ago, so Sejima lived elsewhere, in the Kawasaki district to be exact. He lived there until he was 40 years old. The Sejima family owned a vast amount of real estate in the district. Adjusting for inflation, the land was valued above 30 billion yen. Holy fuck! The Sejima family sold off its holdings. Six months later, the incident occurred. The explosion at the chemical plant. This caused Kawasaki oh. to become a restricted area. Oh, oh, okay. And this is where the, the carnival was, or yeah, the where we found Shoka's body. So he used to live there, then eventually sold off his earnings and then the chemical plant exploded. Hmm, interesting. So he sold it first, got all that money, and then a chem the chemical plant exploded and made that whole area uninhabitable. So maybe he sold it off and then like caused the chemical plant to explode to get basically the people who live there like to, to finish them off i mean was he forced to sell it like he like hated the people that were buying it from him maybe and of course land prices fell oh to less than 130th their original value oh hmm. what are your thoughts did he buy it back or is he planning to buy it back the timing is certainly suspicious to sell that amount of land just six months before it happened right there is another interesting fact after the accident so Sejima purchased all <gasps> the land back he did for just one billion yen oh he totally did so he's got 29 billion yen in his pocket and one billion yen of land 
Correct. But what would he want? I mean, it's already uninhabitable, right? I guess at some point it'll become habitable again. But I mean, look at like Chernobyl. I mean, years later and Chernobyl is still like, you don't go to Chernobyl. By the way, did any of you guys see the actual like HBO thing with a uh, special where they did uh, on Chernobyl? It was super good. It was super like, oh my God. Uh, eye-opening too. It was a rough watch, but it was uh, super fascinating just to see the how it ca how that came to be. But yeah, Chernobyl is still like years later. That's that area is still like radioactive as fuck. Like they're working to try to fix it, but it's like. Ugh. Despite the horrific accident, the Sajima family is no worse off. True, but I don't see the point of it. Yeah. It's not like you got anything out of it. That would be true. But there is more to this story. Unless it was just to kill or get the better of whoever the f hell he there screwed over. Important fact. After the land crisis in the Kabasaki region crashed. God damn it, what? Oh, we will have to continue this conversation later. Now I want to hear the rest. I am receiving a call from headquarters. Is this special agent Dante from this? My name is Akaska from HQ. I'm investigating the Shoko Nadami case. There's something that you need to hear. What is it? We got a phone call earlier from a prisoner at Fuchu Prison. A prisoner? We saved the call. I think you should give it a listen. Who is this? In here. I'm known as number 89. What is this call concerning? I know who killed Shoko Nadami. And if you let me out of here, I will tell you who it is. I suppose you might say I'm looking for a plea bargain. He will kill again, you know. And he'll take their eye while they're still alive. There will be more bodies. If you want to stop this serial killer, I suggest you take my offer. I'll be seeing you. Hmm. This has to be a prank. That's what I thought, too. However, we got the call yesterday afternoon. Before Reggie was killed. In other words... You're saying he predicted the second crime? Yeah, I think he did. That's why I thought I should contact you. Good idea. Thanks, Detective. Good luck. Interesting. Do you think there's anything to this? I don't know. Finish your story! We still got, like, 20 minutes before we get there. Ah... Let's go there. Fuck Oda. Oda sucks. 5.59 p.m. Ah! Oh, Date. What's wrong? You look like you have a lot on your mind. Yeah. I just found out online. The corpse at Bloom Park. That was Renju's ex-wife, wasn't it? Yeah, you stupid idiot. Yeah, it was. So that... Was Mizuki's mom. Yeah, and you left her all alone. Way to go, Oda. Mizuki saw her own mom. And I just... I just left her. Yep, you're a piece of shit. But I didn't know. I knew her as Shoko Nadami. Her last name is different. I didn't know that was Mizuki's mother. I mean, be fair. Uh... <laughs> be fair. Ota. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty bad, but even if it was just a dead body that wasn't related to her, you still should have just run off and left her. I want to apologize to her. I need to tell her that I'm sorry. She's going to punch you in the dick. She's going to punch me in the dick because I, I left her at the bar, but we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Hey, baby. <laughs> you're cute. You get asked out a lot, don't you? I don't know why you're sitting here behind a desk. You should be an idol. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, seriously. Whoever is voicing this, this, this lady is fucking perfect. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> but despite my looks, I am a bit too old to be an idol. Yeah, we actually had the... What was her age? Um, Receptionist. Uh, 36. Oh, God. Wow, we really updated... We really updated this thing now. Look at all the people got added here. So, age 60. Um, he likes authority, fame, and assets. He just likes anything that threads the above. Hobbies, mahjong, golf, and a cheeky carp reading. Skills grasping people's weaknesses, applying pressure, making them obey. Yikes. 
Remember at the post-war generation, he grew up poor, which gave him two things, his motivation for seeking power and wealth and his vindictiveness, vindictiveness toward the upper class. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Mama and MoMA, not to be mixed up. Mama is also 36. Uh, Prussian tending bars, likes loincloths, switching, uh, making, making them touch. Oh shit. Uh, dislikes hate crimes, customers who throw up in the bar. Hobbies, polishing Panito, watching videos, has the uncanny ability to detect virginity. Uh, Mama owns the bar marble in Golden Yokocho, Yo Yokocho in Shinjuku. Date and Ikura are regulars there and she knows them well. She's also an information broker in the criminal underworld. Loma, 48. Uh, likes humanity, injustice, chivalry, Gandhi, pandas, and women. What? Humanity, injustice, chivalry, and Gandhi? Dislikes old-fashioned and irrational traditions. Huh. Not quite what I was expecting. I was like, I like murdering and pillaging and being a mob boss. Uh, hobbies, watching dance, collecting art, hot spring vacations. Why, wow, you're a lot softer than you look, MoMA. Uh, skills, shooting, magic tricks, and beat beatboxing? MoMA became the leader of the Kermakura Yakuza gang after his predecessor stepped down several years ago. In the past, the Kumakuras were known for being ruthless and violent, but MoMA hopes to make the group more peaceful and business-minded. Interesting. Okay. And yet he still gives his his guys fucking Gatling guns. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Rohan. Uh, age 53 deceased. Uh, he likes guns, drugs, money, women, power. So that's, this, this is what I, more of what I was expecting. Dislikes betrayal, rival games, cops. Hobbies, politics, investment fraud, or organ trading, land speculation, skills torture. Okay, so this guy was definitely the hard ass here compared to his brother. Uh, Rohan used to be the leader of the Kamakura gang. One year ago, he committed suicide by jumping from the roof of a building. It was known for his horrific torture technique of peeling his victim's skin from toe to thigh. Yuck! Gross! Uh, 89. Early 40s, know absolutely nothing about him. A serious inmate currently serving a life sentence at Fuchu Prison for murder, known only as uh, number 89. Yakuza! <laughs> How do I know all these things about these guys anyway? <laughs> oh my god! This guy likes ass! <laughs> ass did it! Ass did it! Ass did it! Ass did it! Uh, <laughs> he likes ass, erotic novels, and his boss. Dislikes police, his big brother, Animal cruelty. Hey, we're on the same wavelength there, man. Uh, hobby, training dogs. Skills, won a dog training competition. He's the lowest ranked member of the Kumakuras. He once had dreams of pursuing the top spot in the gang, but has since decided that he would rather focus on training his favorite dog. Uh, he was over oh, 24. Uh, this guy's 42. Uh, he likes dominatrixes. That's the only thing he likes. <laughs> Dislikes domestic violence. Hobby's dissection. Ew. Skills, suturing. Ew. Perhaps due to the way he looks, he's often mistaken for a low-ranking member, even though he is toward the top. He typically does his office work. He's recently fallen in love and lost a lot, lost a lot of weight. He's fallen in love with a dominatrix. Oh, hey, we got some new, uh, hey, Mizuki art. Wait, did we already see this of her riding the, riding the pony? No, I guess we didn't. What? Oh, she's got a metal pipe. Just like the metal pipe she says that she likes, apparently. At some point she's gonna get a metal pipe. She's gonna beat the shit out of somebody, right? I do like Mizuki's design. Like a little outfit's cute. Like a little raincoat or something. I couldn't get into it now. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I turned 36 this year. <laughs> Look at Oda looking at me. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely seems like one of those girls would have a, like, <laughs> like, a, would have one of those laughs, right? Like a nan dresser kind of laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a most you laugh. Uh, uh, look, girl with the big tit. There, no, he said it that time. Girl with the big tit sit by the counter. Yeah, that's why I've decided to call to call her. Not to, to her face, of course. Hey, girl with the big tit. Oh, no! Um, excuse me? Shit, I said it to her face. No! I want to run away and never look back. Girl with the big tits to see what I can. <laughs> run! Oh, my God, Dante. Uh, hey, you want to eat some food sometime? Now, that's awfully aggressive. You're an alpha type, aren't you? Oh, yeah. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. <laughs> Who does? And I kind of like you. Yeah. Oh, uh, look at over there. The owner looks like pissed at me. Like, what about me and my thing? Shut up, Oda. Oh, but there is one little thing you should know about me. I'm a reptilian. 
What? Is that going to be a problem? What's a reptilian? A reptilian humanoid alien. They are said to be shapeshifters that take on human form. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that is definitely going to be a problem. Oh, too bad. What? Uh. Huh? A reptilian? That wasn't in your in your thing here. Was it? No. Nothing about reptilian. I need to update this thing. The fucking reptilians. Thank you for the call. No problem. After all, it means we get to see each other again. Stop giving me that what? look, Oda. Where's Iris? She's recording a podcast right now. Looking at her schedule, it should end soon. This painting again. Oh, by the way, you guys did tell me, so the fluff dialogue does work like... So basically, if you look at the fluff dialogue the first time around and you examine it a second time to get the additional stuff, right? Like, let's say I did skip it the first time. You just wouldn't get that fluff dialogue the second time. You wouldn't get anything, so... Uh, definitely a good reason to make sure to examine everything. So you, when you go back, you, get, you, get, you actually get follow-up stuff, which is awesome. I love that. That one is called Lying, Wishing, Marking Demons. That's not what Mizuki said. Nakapura also asked her trading house on display. She said it was something else. Date, look, a little stink bug. Yay, a stink bug. I have the tendency to get excited about bugs. <laughs> I like where she made the cricket sound warning. Uh, window. The window that I plan to check Oda out of. Oh, that's Rundoyer. Who is that? <laughs> One of these Rundoyer's videos playing, among all the other ones. A lot of drinks, uh, magazines, feature how to get rich with cryptocurrency. I'll definitely be taking that one. Oh, yeah. Is cryptocurrency even a thing anymore? A high table. That's so, that's so 2019. One more bowl, please. That would be soba. God damn it. Uh, low table. That's just a high stool. What about high school? I said stool. Oh my God. How many times are we gonna make that? This is like the third or fourth time we made that joke. How did you know I was looking at that, Oda? Stop looking where I'm looking. Ah, I slowly turn my head around, okay. Oda's standing there looking like he's, like he's getting ready to challenge me to a game of Beyblade or some Tin Pin Slammer. Hey, Dante, are you ready to slam? It's Oda. That's all. Where have you been? Nowhere. Just doing my normal routine. I don't know your normal routine. I went to a doujin store to look at the new releases. Then I ate some ramen at Jiro's and then headed over to the PC cafe to browse threads. You know, normal. If that's normal, I haven't had a normal day in my life. <laughs> wow, hello, Dante really hates Oda. Uh, about Renju's case. Uh, I don't know anything. I've only seen Renju a couple of times. I didn't think it was possible to be this bad at lying. Though it is plainly obvious, I did a thermal check on Ota's body. This is his current body temperature. Ah! That's what I thought. Have you forgotten, Ota? You're my thrall. <laughs> You're my bitch now. You don't want me to tell Iris your secret, do you? Huh? Well, wait, it's no big deal. I just... You better start talking. Okay. Start talking. Okay, before we go with that, let's go about Mizuki. Mizuki didn't seem like she was angry with you. What? You met Mizuki? Oh, at the interrogation. That's right. He doesn't know I live with Mizuki. I have no reason to hide it, but... It's sort of hard to explain. Yeah, I spoke to Mizuki at her, um, questioning earlier. You're sick, Date. What? Questioning? That sounds dirty. If I were writing a light novel, that's exactly how I would describe a sexy scene. What the fuck, Oda? What the fuck is wrong with you? What kind of novels are you writing, kid? Oda, what? 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 <laughs> okay. Oda, you want me to throw her out the window again? Last night, I was walking over to Sunfish Pocket, and I saw Renju come out of the building. Was he alone? <laughs> Someone was with him. A man. 
Hot, hotter, colder, colder. No. A woman. Um. <laughs> I don't even need to. I don't even need to say. I'm fine. Okay, look. I can tell you're trying to protect her, but you have to help me out here. Was it Iris? N no, it definitely for sure wasn't Tessa. Got it. So Renju was with Iris. Okay, fine. There's no point in hiding it, I guess. You're right. Renju came out of the building with Tessa. But Tessa has nothing to do with this. She wouldn't murder anyone. She wouldn't hurt a fly. She's fucking crazy. We all know it. She's an idol. Idols don't kill people. They do when they're fucking crazy. You need to stop putting her on a pedestal. Tessa is a savior to me. The Tessa I know wouldn't hurt anyone. Tessa you know never existed. Savior. The first time I met her, I had a bad case of writer's block. And I saw all this awful negativity online and I lost sight of what I really wanted to write. It was the lowest point of my life. That writer's block, man, just fucked me up. He is talking like a professional, though he hasn't published anything. Yeah. Yeah. Then, by pure chance, I found a video of Tessa singing and dancing. I just saw her ass and her titties just juggling around, and it just changed my whole perspective on life. And it made me realize something important. You don't have to care what people think, you know? If you do your best at what you believe in, your message will get through to people. That attitude is something all great creators need to have. After that, I became a huge ASET fan and got over my writer's block. And I know I'm not the only one Tessa has inspired. A lot of otaku like me say that Tessa is their savior. She cheers them up when they're down. So there's no way Tessa can be involved in murder. Absolutely impossible. Slow down and say Iris was a murderer. That was your, but your words. Specter. I need to hear her side of the story. If I do, I might find out she's totally innocent. If you truly believe that she didn't do it, you should tell me everything you know. What? Do it for Iris. Do it. What time did Renju and Iris leave the building? Around 6.15, I guess. Where did they go? I didn't see. They got into Renju's car and drove off. And what did you do? I went inside Sunfish Pocket, but I saw a sign that said the entire club was reserved. I figured I would just go home. What happened? Ah, demon girl! Date. Iris, there's something I need to ask you. Come with me. What have you done? Police headquarters. I'm taking you down to HQ. Iris, I'm going to ask you some questions. Please answer honestly. However, you do not have to say anything that might incriminate you. The right to remain silent? You're treating me like a criminal. Not exactly. I'm just looking for the truth, and I would appreciate your cooperation. Ooh. Security camera. Terry's room has two surveillance cameras. This is one of them. The other one is installed near the doorway. Metal pipe! One of Mizuki's favorite things. This is the camera used to record the interrogation. Images captured by this camera are sent to the database in real time. Just hook up uh, Iris to the freaking uh, Somnium shit, all right? That's how I get to the demon truth. It is later saved permanently on our servers. You can remotely control it as well. Camera used for interrogation. One's facing Iris. Two-way mirror. It's a small room on the other side of the mirror, but you can't see from here. All right, Iris, tell me the demon truth. What have you done? You killed him, didn't you? Iris looks nervous. It's understandable, of course, after suddenly being taken to a place like this. Uh, is that a story true? Here's what Ota told me. Yesterday around 6.15 p.m., you and Renju came out of the Sunfish Pocket Building. Is that true? Yes. 
Mr. Okira called me and told me he wanted me to come to Sunfish Pocket, ASAP. Around what time is that? 5 p.m., I think. Oh, by the way, you guys did tell me, I think this is not actually the same voice actress who did uh, Dev Devila and Popola. Popa, or where, where? the twins from Near Tomata, as well as uh, Near. I got ready, then headed over there. Relatively new actress, I think. I guess I got there about an hour later. Date, I checked her call history. At 4.58 p.m., there is a record of a call to Iris from Renju's phone. Um... You used to work at Sunfish Pocket, right? I heard you used to work at Sunfish Pocket. That's right. How long? A little over a year. Working there that long, you're probably pretty familiar with the equipment. Yeah, I guess. Do you have an alibi for last night? What were you doing from 7 to 9 last night? I was at home the whole time. You're sure? Yes. Iba, thermograph. There is no noticeable rise in Iris's body temperature. She isn't lying. Not necessarily. We must consider the possibility that she is a natural liar. Well, with that kind of confidence, her temperature wouldn't change. Correct. Renju's estimated time of death was 8 p.m. last night. If Iris' story is true, she couldn't have done it. There is another possibility. Even if Iris was at home, she could have killed Renju. You mean... Hired somebody? Um... When did you find out Renju was killed? When did you find out Renju was killed? This morning, on the news. And you were with Renju last night? You didn't think to call the police and inform them of this? Oh, sorry. Is that something you're supposed to do? I had a podcast to record this morning, so... If I went to the police, I'd be late. And that would cause everyone a lot of trouble, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, can I ask your mother about your alibi? I'll ask again. You are sure you were at home around 8 p.m. yesterday? Yes. Can I ask your mother about your alibi? You can, but there'd be no point. Why is that? My mom was at home. She came back home early this morning. This morning? Yeah. Where was she? I don't know. You don't know. Come to think of it, Iris's mom had connections to Renju too. Hitomi did mention that yesterday. Renju was my classmate at Eitoku High. We've known each other for 20 years now. Hmm. However, we have nothing to link her to the case. But I am curious. What was Hitomi doing last night? I actually don't even remember her saying that. Maybe I, I must have I must have missed that. What were you doing with Renju about the surveillance camera? What about the surveillance camera? Do you know where those tapes were stored? What are you trying to say? What were you doing with Renju? What were you doing with Renju? He asked me about a job. What kind of job? He rented out Sunfish Pocket for a party and he wanted me to MC. He said that it was an important party and that a lot of big shots were going to be there. But the girl he asked to do it originally got sick and couldn't come. But I turned him down. Why? Because I'm just an internet idol. I've never done any MCing before. Especially with important people being there. What did you do after you turned him down? What did you do after you turned him down? I left with Mr. Okira. At 6.15pm. That must have been when Ota saw me. And after that? I asked Mr. Okira to take me home in his car. I got home at 7 p.m. I was home the rest of the night. What do you think, Iba? I cannot detect any contradictions. However, her story appears almost too organized. How do you know all these damn times? Why are you looking at the clock? Human memory is ambiguous. Her use of exact times leads me to be suspicious. Yeah. That's true. You're a dirty liar. What'd you do with the body, Jessa? Am I a suspect? Yes. It's not like that. It's fine, Date. It's true that I met with Mr. Okiura yesterday, but... How do I put this? It's impossible that I'm the killer. Why? I'm a teenage girl! Mr. Okiura is a fully grown man. Oh, she's got a point. A girl like her could have stabbed, poisoned, or shot him dead, but... Strangling? No. It's still possible, you see. Oh, shit, here we go. Iris could kill Renju because... Ah, hey, we actually do have some, like, some kind of Phoenix Wrighty kind of things here. That's cool. I wasn't actually sure if this game would just be totally linear and wouldn't have anything, like, that lets you, like, present evidence or what. Renju's estimated TOD is yesterday around 8 p.m. 
Numerous hemorrhages in the blood vessels of the throat and face indicate strangulation. The weapon used to commit the murder was some kind of twisted cloth. The criminal likely wrapped it around Renju's neck and pulled. Renju then suffocated. The more precise cause of death is cerebral circulation failure due to vessel closure in the neck. In short, Renju was strangled from behind with some kind of cloth or rope. Okay. The autopsy determined that Renju vacated his bowels from muscle relaxation upon death. However, no trace of this was found on the corpse or at the scene. No trace of the doo-doo. This means that it is highly likely Renju was killed elsewhere and moved to where he was found. Renju's corpse was discovered at the Maid Cafe Sunfish Pocket, hanging from a beam on the ceiling by a wire. He was found over the counter. The wire was attached on both ends. One end was attached to a hook that was embedded inside Renju's jaw. The other end was attached to beer kegs found on the floor. The kegs hold approximately 20 liters of liquid. They weigh approximately 55 pounds each. Hmm. Uh, Renju's approximately 160 pounds. Sedation. The autopsy discovered a high concentration of benzodiazepine in Renju's body. This drug is commonly used as a sedative. It is likely that Renju was in a state of compromised consciousness before his death. Right. This might be part of the evidence here. The fact that could have sedated him and then strangled him. Sunfish Pocket is located on the second floor. According to the records, from 6.30 p.m. until the body was found, the elevator stopped on the second floor only once at 8.55 p.m. The total weight detected in the elevator was approximately 310 pounds. Yeah, and we already knew what his his weight was, what again? 160 pounds. So we determined that the person that would have killed him would have been even less, weighed less than he did. I don't think I actually have anywhere in my, actually can't even open my menu, what everyone weighs, I don't think, uh, in my profiles. Uh, Renju's watch. I know this watch. It's Renju's favorite. I found it inside an oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. That means... The oil drum inside Sunfish Pocket. The type that has a lid you can open with about a 200 liter capacity. Empty, it weighs approximately 44 pounds. Anyway, let's go ahead and sed I, I believe it's the uh, sedation here. A heavy concentration of sedatives were discovered in Renju's body. Renju was practically in a coma before he died. He wouldn't have struggled. So, Iris could have strangled him. Wait a minute. Even if I was somehow able to kill him, the rest of it is impossible. The rest of it? Like hanging up his body? How do you know that? What do you mean? It's all over the news. That's true. Renju weighed about 160 pounds. Even if she used her entire body weight, I don't think she could have hauled him up. Right. It would be hard for her to do it with her strength alone. But with a little ingenuity, it could be done. Ingenuity? Uh, so discovery of the body, I believe. It went like this. First, Renju was laid out on the counter. Next, the wire was thrown over the beam and connected to the hook in his jaw. Then all you need to do is put the three beer kegs on the counter. You think a teenage girl could have done that? I'm sure it was hard. The kegs weighed 55 pounds each. But that's not impossible even for a teenage girl. I guess it isn't impossible. After that, you get on top of the counter, hook the other end of the wires to the kegs, and then, what do you think happens if you kick the kegs off the counter? The three kegs weighed 165 pounds altogether. Renju weighs five pounds less. Hmm, I guess that would make it possible. But... But there is one more thing. What? Considering the state of the crime scene, it's clear Renju was killed elsewhere and brought to where we found him. If Iris is the culprit, how did she move the body? Hey! I know, I know. You're going to say you couldn't have moved a 160-pound body. Unfortunately for her, she could have. How? Uh, in the oil drum. It's got something to do with it, but I need more support for my theory. Oh, hey, okay. Renji's watch and the old drum. That's cool. I need two bits of evidence.
Do you know what this is? I wonder what happens if you get it wrong if it's, if it's just like a redo. P probably. It's Renju's favorite watch. Blow up your HP bar! Ah! <laughs> this was discovered inside an empty oil drum at Sunfish Pocket. Hey, Date, I know you're on a roll right now, but could you please report things like that according to protocol? What are you trying to say? I'm saying that it wouldn't be so hard to move a body if it were in a cylinder. You would just have to roll it. So you're saying Renju's body was moved inside the drum, which is how the watch came off. But the suspect didn't notice it. I'm not saying anything for sure. Just pointing out that it's possible. I didn't do it! You don't even have any witnesses! If I were rolling an oil drum in the middle of the street, people would have noticed! You could have put it in a car and driven it. I don't have a license! Doesn't mean you can't drive. Even an AI can drive nowadays. Are you mocking me? <laughs> yes! Don't make sudden outbursts like that. You insulted me. Just be quiet. Um, who are you talking to? Shut up, maggot. She's a fucking demon, I tell you. Anyway, Iris, you weigh about 105 pounds, right? Where is this coming from? If only you weighed more. Or less. That is none of your business. No, I mean that your weight is relevant to the case. Mm. If the oil drum was used to transport the corpse, then the possibility of the suspect being around 105 pounds okay. is extremely likely. I see. So, combination of his weight, her weight, and the oil drum. Why do you say that? Does end up equal. Equaling the elevator record. Three pieces of evidence. Uh, oil drum and Renju's weight. Iris, on which floor is Sunfish Pocket located? On the second floor. That's right. So, I checked the elevator records. Before the corpse was discovered, the elevator only stopped at the second floor once, at 8.55 p.m. And we discovered that the total cargo weight on the elevator was about 310 pounds. Renju weighed 160. The oil drum weighs 44. Together, that's about 205. Subtracting that from 310... This doesn't look good. Why are you... Now, this obviously doesn't prove you're the murderer. A lot of people weigh 105 pounds. Or someone could have put 105 extra pounds in the elevator, sent it up, and taken the stairs to throw us off the trail. However... Dante, stop. Iris is acting strange. Don't turn around. Why not? Just stay put. Keep your eyes on the wall. Hmm. Pretending that I'm not looking at her, so she's... There are several cameras in this room. Two surveillance cameras installed at the corners of the ceiling, and one camera on a tripod. I hacked each to gain access to their recordings. Look at this. Uh... She's fidgeting around. Is she? <laughs> Is she doing something under the desk? That's what it looks like. But we need to confirm something before we confront her. We need to know that she's in fact doing something under the desk. Without turning around? Yes. How would I do that? You can't tell from this angle. Uh... Oh, the mirror. Uh-oh. Did we not take her phone from her? Are we that stupid? Ah, shit. Uh-oh. Came here with Oda. Iris, what are you thinking? What is that thing? Hey! Answer me, Iris. She's definitely hiding something, Date. Sync with her. I'm getting in her brain. I'm gonna find this shit. Iris is experiencing rem sleep. Medication is working perfectly. 
Good. How about it, Pate? Think you can do it? Not a problem. Get it started. The time limit is six minutes. So before time is up... I know. Then, let's begin. Going in. Blah, blah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Hmm. Hmm. I can't believe we didn't take our phone away. We're fucking idiots. What is this place? It looks depressing. How is this related to Iris? Unknown, but there must be a connection. Iris, what are you hiding? Somnium scan! Activate! <laughs> Energy! Metal lock! Da -da. Metal lock two. Metal lock three? What am I even looking at? Shadow? Until what am I looking at here? Wall? <laughs> Discover our secret mysterious room, videos, and a strange device. You may be able to find the demon truth. Okay. Um kinda of curious to see. Look at the flow chart here for a second. Okay, it didn't seem like I was actually kind of curious to see if there was like, if you failed this thing, would there be like a branch off point from there? It didn't seem like it, so. But I think there's a potential, potentially could branch off here again, like it did before. Like maybe the majority of the uh, decisions you make in this game are from inside the Somniums or something. I don't know, but I think this is probably a good place for us to end things here for now. Uh, anything updated aside from the appendix? Nah. Um, all right, guys, I'm gonna stay in the pause menu because I don't want to, uh, use up any of my sweet valuable time but uh anyway guys i hope you all enjoyed this episode uh if you did please leave a like actually i, I can unpause it because i just saved so if you did please leave a like and a favorite and subscribe and already become a piggy penguin boy the slp where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny this is getting interesting right hmm i don't know like we're already sort of laying on pretty thick pretty early that like well maybe she's a fucking psycho so Hmm. Hmm. Where's the going with this bullshit? But anyway, guys, as always, till next time, stay classy.